everyone. Welcome back to year two, season two of the Iconist Podcast. I came up with so much force that Rod had to jump back. So as you know, I'm one of your hosts, Barry Carter, a.k.a. Barry 3D. And if you want to find where I'm at and protect yourself, protect your net. If you want to see where I'm at, just look down below and you can find all the links there. And for those who are listening, just check out Barry3D.com. That's B A. R R Y 3D.com. There you can find me. I'm my host on the Iconist Podcast. And as always, I'm joined by the man, the myth, the legend, the hardest working DJ that I know, traveling back and forth from Toronto to Montreal and all over <laughs> virtually. Playing off virtually. Him virtually. And who knows? He might be down in the state some point. He, he, I could be everywhere. I could be everywhere. everywhere. Hey, Let's you know go. What? First of all, who am I talking about? My cousin, Doc. my best friend, mm. my co-host, my compadre, the one and only. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. DJ Rod C. It's me, everyone. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Wow. Woo. Rod, real quick, where can they find you, Rod? Where can they find Listen, you? You can find me, you know, in information down below. Uh, you can find me in information down below. Uh, you can find me on... Inf- okay, sorry. You can find me... <laughs> Down and for those who are listening, where can they find you, man? No, definitely. I'm gonna say it, of course. You're gonna find me. You can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Mr. Rod C. You can definitely find me there on the Instagram world. You can find me on Twitch at DJ Rod C. Listen, I'm all over. You can find me. Hit me up. Come through. Come through the Twitch world. Come and say hi. Just say, hey, I caught you on the Iconis world. Welcome in, welcome in. Let's go, let's go. Right on, let's right on. Let's so this, first of all, we know hmm. we're always about the books. We need the books to support us, to do everything we need to do. Two sh- comic book stores behind us is Wow Comics out in Kitchener. Check Swings out in Montreal in the South Shore. So if you go to Wow, tell, tell you know, uh, uh, Wes, I said hi. And if you go out to Montreal, tell Trevor, I said hi. We are, these are friends of the show. We're friends of them. And of course, the man who makes us look so pretty. The one and only, who am I talking about, Rod, here? Jay Bird Digital Arts. Art, 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 Jay art, Bird art, Digital art. Arts. If Let's you go. Need anything done, posters, mm. templates, banners, mm. doesn't matter for if it's digital media or live media, like paper copy, he's got you covered, right? So reach out, date Jay Bird Digital Arts, find his logo at the end of this video, give him a shout out. And if you mentioned that you heard about him on the Iconis podcast, if you're getting any mm. work done by him, let him know that, and he will give you a what? Discount. Discount? I discount. like discounts. I like d- discounts. It's d- 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 a discount. I'm That's never. right. Just mention that. Hey, Jay, I heard about you on the Iconist podcast. I need to get a logo done. Discount. <clears throat> right on. Thank you, Jay. Those are friends of the show. And of course, definitely, there's always a ton of podcasts out there that you can always join and look up and stuff like that. Um, you know, another one we always hashtag in is, uh, for example, hashtag pod nation. You want to find you go. hashtag pod nation. There's a list of podcasts out there. You, you you can't miss them. And we're part of that. Right. So just just kind of get other podcasts out there because let's put it this way. There's not much on TV. So here we go. <laughs> Stick to YouTube and podcast. Thank you. There you go. Right Thank on. And today that brings us to mm. the show as you saw the title. And here we go. We were talking about the Young Sentinels. Am I? Or am I talking about oh. the Space Sentinels? Hmm. Which one it is? Glad it's going to be both. <laughs> it is both. Booyah! Oh. Like DX. Got two words for you. Redone, redone, redone. Now, what I mean by that is, yes, the show was, when it aired to TV on 1977, it was called the Space Sentinels. That's how you find it. But a lot of mm-hmm. times people always refer to it as the Young Sentinels. The reason why being, 1977 was a popular year and some things seemed to influence other things. What am I talking about? May the force be with you. Mm-hmm. Right on. So when, you know, when this show was in pre-production, it was originally called The Young Sentinels. That's what it was. That's how they got all the voice work done. This is why in the show, people say, oh, look, it's The Young Sentinels. And they show up. But the show was called Space Sentinels. Space Sentinels. Because in 1977, while they were doing it, Star Wars came out. And uh, clearly, we know it's a huge hit. Uh, let's put it this way. If you're listening to this show, you've already watched a couple of episodes of Andar, <laughs> the new Star Wars show. So... That's- that's to show you the influence that had back from 1977 and not only in its own genre, but other genres. So over at Filmation, they turned around and said, eh, you know what, uh, you know, Lou Schumer, uh, Schumer, he was like, you know what we should do? What? To capture what should we do? audience. We should change it from young to space. Mm, I like that. 
right? We draw in the young people. Yes, right. Space yeah. is the future. Space, Space is Wars, the future. Yep. Star Wars at the time, I'm, and I'm not discrediting Star Trek, but Star Wars at the time was a space sci-fi explosion that yeah. made people go. So anything with space, if you were a certain age, like myself back in 1977, you saw Space Sentinels, and it was superpowers in spandex and in spaceships, and I was mm-hmm. like, I'm in. <laughs> I mean, like that, that commercial that comes on TV with that soccer player. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I thought for sure he was saying, I mean, I mean, I mean? I'm like, I mean, I mean, and it's like, oh no, I mean, he's got a thick accent. I'm like, right on, brother, get your um, money, get your money. That's it. <laughs> right. So this, this came out from filmation. Well, you know, uh, at the time and, 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 or, and you'll see it there as like I say, filmation, but it was like Lou Schwimmer. Um, and I'm just looking at my notes here, Lou Schwimmer and Norm, Norm Prescott. So they were the executive okay. producers on this show. It ran for 13 episodes, about 20 something, 22 minutes without commercials each episode. Right. And it aired on NBC back in September of 1977, right? So it started September 3rd to, sorry, December, sorry, September 10th, 10th. To December 3rd of mm-hmm. 1977. Why are we talking about this show? Because there's so much to it. I wanted to know more. For real. So here's the premise of the show. The premise of the show was there was three young people back in, and when I say back in time, in ancient times, let's just put it away. So three Fresh. young people. Right. And they were picked up by an alien race and transported to another planet. And they were trained, given powers, uh, <laughs> and right, and, and and brought back to Earth or, or sent back to Earth so on sense. a spaceship with uh, uh, AI, an artificial intelligence that was just mm-hmm. a giant head inside of the spaceship on their bridge, you know, called Sentinel One. And right. they had their maintenance mm-hmm. robot, right? And he went by the, the you know, you know, maintenance operator. Who right, was yeah, and his name was Mo. Mo, yeah. Mo. Mo. And we'll get we'll get into Mo. We'll get into Mo shortly. Right. <laughs> yeah, it was classics, man. So at the time, I thought this show was cool, right? So mm-hmm. they came back and it almost so let me give you a little bit more and I'll get in what I thought my feels were. So they came back to Earth. First thing that first, they all had their names. So the three names of the individuals were Astra, who was the leader of the team. And at the time in 1977, which was really refreshing to see, she was a strong black woman, green eyes, and she was a shapeshifter. She right. had the ability of flight, but she could shapeshift, you know, molecule rearrangement, as they called it, into any animal, no matter the right. size. Right. Right. But so long, Wonder Twins. <laughs> Wonder Twins, Beast Boy, you know, that, that's yeah. it. That's it, the, right? The originals. The originals. But she was the leader of the team. She was more the level headed one. Um, and, and you know, and, and the guys would kind of flirt with her, but I mean it would be more of a nothing, nothing bad, and nothing in that sense. And I and I like that. But the fact of a strong female, black female character as the leader of the team, mm-hmm. awesome. And her name was Astria. Yeah, Astria. Right? Right. And then you had the the another one who was the jokester. He was into martial arts, uh, he was Japanese, and he went by the name Mercury. And Mercury. he was able to run fast. And I'm not talking, you know, fast, like maybe Quicksilver fast. I'm talking more like Flash kind of fast. There you go. Well, and it's funny. He could fly at super speed. He could run at super speed. But most of the time when he they were flying or going on a mission together, he would not really go ahead. It was very rare he ran ahead. He would just go with them and they would all get there together. But he was more the practical joker on the team, the the goofy one. He was He was the goofy hero. But serious to throw down? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then lastly, and that's Mercury. And then lastly, there was Hercules. Hercules was a, a blonde, you know, blue-eyed, blonde hair, blue-eyed, Greek guy, tanned body. And clearly you could tell when they get transported from their original homes from Earth, when they're leaving, where they're getting teleported up. So you see Astria, she's gone on like more of a, an African attire. You see mm-hmm. Mercury is in a Japanese kimono, Japanese. right? Yeah. And and Hercules, Hercules. is dressed dressed as what they were wearing Greek times, right? Correct. Okay, and, and that's how they went into space with the sandals. So they went there, came back, and these are the names. So really, Astria, Hercules, and Mercury. All of them. Go ahead. Okay, I was going to say, two out of three, well, first of all, they're all were named after people in mythology. Correct. And two of them were under Roman mythology, not Greek. So let me let me educate you all. <laughs> mm-hmm. On this moment right here. When we hear the name Hercules, Hercules is the Roman name of that character. The Greek name is Heracles. 
A lot of people confuse that. They think Hercules yep. is the Greek name. It is not. Heracles, Zeus, those are the Greek names of the gods. Right. When Rome invaded Greece and took it over, they said, not only did we over take you over, and this is a true facts history, mm -hmm. we are going to rename your gods. So instead of Zeus, it was Jupiter. They renamed all the gods, the, the names of the planets that we have up today. So Jupiter, you know, instead of Aries, it was Mars, right? The only person that didn't change uh, Aphrodite was Venus. Right. Heracles was changed to Hercules. Hercules. Right? So this is where every time people say Hercules is Greek, no. Shame on you. Heracles is Greek. Hercules is Roman. Hermes is Greek. Mercury is Roman. Same gods, same backstories. They just had a, you know, they had a remix. Right. <laughs> but Astria is the only one there with a Greek name. Greek. Mm -hmm. From Greek mythology. Right. So that's what I thought was interesting. They didn't give her a Roman version of her name. So, that, yeah. That, no, definitely. And, and when we find out, we're going to start getting into the characters. You'll start seeing that their personalities and the actions, you know, their, their characteristics is definitely stemmed off of their Greek mythology. I mean, their, their, yes. their Greek and, 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 and Roman mythology is definitely was poured into that. So Absolutely. we can get into that, but we we are going to no, we, 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 we get it now. We we'll get it right now. Okay, no, so let's go with Astria. So Astria, basically, <laughs> you understand she's the leader, and when you watch the show, you start to catch on, on that she is the leader. She's always about the being fair, justice. They're all about fair, being fair and justice. But she was the one who was like the leader, like the level-headed one in that sense of basically making sure that okay, things need to be done. Okay, you do this, you do that. And you can tell by her presence that she was the strong, justice, innocent, a purity type of individual. Hercules right. was definitely pronouncing with his strength and being very health conscious. Yes. My gosh, this guy is always trying to eat all proper foods and make sure that, listen, I will tell you, Mike, the smoothies weren't killed me when I saw. Listen, this, ladies and gentlemen, this was back in 1977. Right. I'm just saying that I'm only being, I'm only these years old. I'm not saying how old I am, but you know, <laughs> you're getting used to understand about getting your mix. And, <clears throat> okay, there's no wee protein and stuff, but you're making smoothies in the last 20, 20 year kind of scenario, per yeah. se. At least yeah. that's what I thought. Excuse me. Back in this time, in the 77, these Barbie break like, yeah, listen, when you have the ability to make a character that you say, listen, you need to have a smoothie. I said, a smoothie? Did he just? Did he? I will just, I will just sit right here. Healthy continue. living, man. Healthy living. Yeah, but and, you, that's something we wouldn't think about, you know, now, you know, it, it, it's commonplace, right? It's smoothies are commonplace. You hear people, oh, I'm getting a smoothie. I'm going to the gym, I'm getting a smoothie. Completely. But 1977, that wasn't really the common talk when you would hear someone say, I'm getting a smoothie. You're getting a what? Yeah. <laughs> You mean and, the and, ice cream? A, no, a smoothie. No, a smoothie. What? what? And, and, and also the fact that for me, I'm yeah. trying to recall hearing a cartoon talking about junk food in that sense, because in that same episode, yes. Hercules is talking to Mercury, because Mercury yes. now, as Barry said, is a comical. He's a joker. He's the he's comedian of the group. No problem. Listen, you're, you are what you eat. So you're always eating junk food. I mean, didn't I just say literally junk food? I'm like, oh. You're writing this in the script. Very interesting. We're we're making a little realism in there, making yeah. a little real. I was like, absolutely. And they're and you know, like GI Joe, you right? It's like knowing it's half the battle. This this cartoon really trying to turn around and aim at kids to promote, you know, being fair, like all the cartoons at the time, eating right. healthy, and, and and there was still action in it. But then yeah. here we are, all these years later, talking about it. So, so, and 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 you touched on it before. So the point that I was going to get was. When it came to history, so not only were these characters taken up to an alien race, mm -hmm. trained, given powers, they were also given immortality. Facts. And sent back to Earth with a spaceship, with Mo, with Sentinel-1, and monitoring the Earth to be like the Guardian. So pretty much they were like the Green Lantern Corps. The, mm -hmm. uh, the, you know, if you watch our other episode on that, where we mentioned we're talking about Manhunter, the Green Lantern Corps, and policing the the space and the cosmos this Correct. is what they're at yeah the thing is though where okay and i'm getting ahead of myself so when they came back to earth they had these names because they were 
you know, they're, they're trying to say like Greek gods didn't exist. It was still mythology. But when what? you heard the tales of Her uh, Hercules, right? Hercules yeah. from the young Sentinels, space Sentinels, was the one doing these labors to a certain degree, right? Right, being li being the living representation. Yes, at that time. Yes. So this is how yes. the story goes. Basically, is based off of the folklore and the thought process. Like, right? Was it really a person named Hercules who did? I think I think story tells of a man who was strong enough to break down water. Oh my gosh, right. that could have been Hercules. Boulders over his hand. A man running as fast as lightning with the speed of Mercury. Is that real? I think I heard a rumor in the other village. Right. There you go. So it made a perfect sense that they yes. actually had it in there. And I was like, kudos. kudos. Right. Very and they nice mentioned evidence. it. They touched on it. And then for the mm -hmm. show, even though the show took place. So when we're watching the show, the show, uh, we were watching it in our time of 1977. That's when it was aired, right? Right. In one of the episodes, you, you tell that they were in the 70s at the time mm -hmm. because there's a time travel episode where they get brought to the future and they're like, where are we? Oh, it's 1985. We got to get back to our time of 1977 or 1978. Yeah. So I'm like, wait a minute. You guys are still talking about times like 85 is the future? Wow. Here we are in 2022. Right. So what happened to them? Here, here, and they never had. So this is what I liked about the show. The show had a lot of great plots or ideas on the surface that could have gone so much more. Mm -hmm. So I like that they had they went to the Trinity, you know, unit. And when I think of that, every group has a Trinity show. And if you don't think so, I'm going to prove it to you. So when we talk mm. about Justice League, we all know mm -hmm. Superman, Batman, and mm -hmm. Wonder Woman are the Trinity. You talk Correct. about the Legion of Superheroes, right? Mm -hmm. Cosmic Boy, Saturn Girl, and uh, Lightning Lad are the Trinity. Right. If right. you talk the original Battlestar Galactica, that's Apollo, Starbuck, and Boomer. That was the Ooh. Trinity. Those three actors always interacted more than Facts. anybody else, and, and they drove the story. Facts. Right? So they went down and had the Trinity with Astria, Mercury, and Hercules. Okay, like that. Love the so, powers. Love the powers. Now, so what I took, one of the things I took back when, if you watch this now, if you go and watch this uh -huh. right now, you're going to see some similarities to stuff that you've already seen in your life. If you're into the lore like we all are, I will assume that you're here watching and listening to us, that you're in this particular genre like us. So you'll see the similarity to something like <laughs> Power Rangers. And I was like, hmm, who came first? And it's funny. I, I don't know if there's similarity or not, but I'm just doing a quick little research yeah, whenever yeah. I can. And what I can tell is that at least there's no indication that uh, Power Rangers was the thought process could have came from the Sentinels, young, I mean, the Space Sentinels. Oh, I see what you're saying, right. But, but uh, you can clearly see that at least from the time that when Power Rangers was created, that was years after and you can see the similarity you have you can see the similarities very well right in there in that lore so it's like hmm interesting interesting right. indeed uh even 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 your favorite Battlestar not Battlestar sorry Battle of the Planets you can see 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 gotcha man you can see you can see the similarities in that, now, I didn't get a chance to look at that. I'm just thought of right off the top of my head. But you can see, definitely, gotcha, man. You can see the similarity, three versus five. But you have, you know, the main computer, and you got your assistant robot who's helping out. So I was like, oh, I'm like, oh, very interesting. Yeah, but because I Sentinel one is almost like a Zor is like Zordon. He's a, he's a Zordon. That that's exactly it. Now, I know for the hardcore fans, I know Power Rangers did exist back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s. We got it here in the 90s. You know right? what? Okay. So, mm -hmm. but, but hold up. Uh, but you're onto something, though, right? Because I know when we got Power Rangers here in North America, we got, like, you know, uh, well, we got Jason and Zach and Tommy and all them. And that was, there was other Power Rangers series before we got it in North America. Facts. Right? Facts. But, it, and it goes but it was back. The time so frame. It, it's around that same time. What came first, the chicken or the egg? So I don't know. Right. I, I, I I didn't do the research, but I know there was teams prior to Power Rangers. And I remember when uh, years ago when Power Rangers was out, I remember I used to kind of amaze my brother Brian at moments for half a second because, mm -hmm. well, I found a website and I'm like, oh, 
this is what's to be next uh, year's Power Rangers. Because what they would do is take the current year that was in Japan, they would take it, redub it, recast it with North American Correct. actors, and then and then put it out. So when they were doing, like, say, one season and a, a series of Power Rangers, and they're getting the, near to the end of that team, I could see the other team over in, this, in Japan. They had a website that was up there. It was like, oh, current Power Rangers in Japan, here's the team. Here's who they're fighting. Here's the plot lines. I went, well, look at that. <laughs> And that's, and that's how they did it. Like, yes. if you look at a time, I don't know if it's on right now. It's been a long time since I saw it on Netflix. Uh-huh. But there was a show called, I believe it's like Shows That Made Us. Yes. TV yes. Or TV Show That Made Us. And I believe it's that a documentary. There's a couple of them in that particular right. vein. The toys That but Made Us, The Shows That Made Us. Yeah, yeah, it could have yeah. yeah. been one of those ones. Exactly. And probably with The Toys That Made Us. And they were talking about the whole concept of basically, like you saying, they were like, um, when they bought the rights for it to bring it to the U.S., I was already big already in Japan, and it's basically like we can just get we can get the rights and bring it over and bring over the visuals. But because of the the language um, differences, they all can do is just clip in just the action, and that's all they did. Like anything else was, of course, overdubbed and everything along that line. But they just looped that out and looped that in and looped that out perfectly. But it was bought after the fact, so basically the foundation was already created in Japan years before. Before it was brought over here. Yes, yes, ex- absolutely. So there's, there's a lot of similarities, and and I like this show. And what this show did for me is, for face value, mm-hmm. I like the show. It had its action, it had its quirkiness, it had cool settings. So their spaceship, which I thought the spaceship was, like I love the design of their spaceship. It, yeah, and it was inside of a, a, a dormant volcano in uh, was it uh, uh, Caldera? So uh, Caldera. So it's in a dormant volcano, volcano, and it sits there. That's where their headquarters is. And this mm-hmm. spaceship, of course, being a spaceship, it can go down to space. It can also go underwater. It had a lot of parts to it. We never see enough of the inside of the spaceship. So here's what I want to say. As a kid, when I watched this show, there's one thing I really wanted, and, and, and all kids wanted at the time. We, I wanted toy figures. I've never mm-hmm. seen toy figures of the three characters. I think if they made Is toy it? figures of the spaceship uh, or a spaceship playset with it, it would have actually done more i don't you know it's a shame they only did 13 episodes and i think that's the main thing unfortunately that there wasn't enough episode to drive you know sales and drive people to like be you know oh if you got season two then i'm sure that would at least at that point okay we need to produce some some actual figures and put it out there so unfortunately it 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 was lost before its time right that's kind of scenario you know and and the thing is pinging off like the green lantern court so let's get right into the show the show itself had you know different episodes they, their main villain they established was also someone that went through the same process from a different mm-hmm. planet, similar to Earth, brought over by those aliens. But instead of it three being three people, it was just one. one. And they gave him all three powers. Mm-hmm. And he was their main villain. Now, yes. they only fought him one. I think he only fought him twice in the series. He fought him in the very first episode. And yeah. I think he comes back at one point and they fight him again. And, you know, but the fact that he was evils and one person is fighting three. So, so I, I like the concept. Here's mm-hmm. why I think this show needs to come back. You know, there was a lot of meat left on the bone on this show that we never got. It's like picture you walk into McDonald's, mm-hmm. you order yourself a combo, and then you just walk out with the fries. Shame. <laughs> exactly what it is. As good as those fries are. But you, mm-hmm. you right, you walk out with the fries. And I know someone's gonna bury not real fries. Whatever, that's a different debate. They look like fries. I'll eat it. I, I fool myself. I eat hot dogs. I'm good. So <laughs> walk out there and you leave behind. And now this is why I said you leave behind because we don't know. We never hear Astria, Hercules, or Mercury's names before they got taken to the aliens. Clearly, in the opening of the show, you see them all brought up in their authentic wear at the time from right. different parts of the globe. So did they have, obviously they had parents. Were their parents still alive when they got picked up? What scenario, got, so let's put it, did they have, you know, were their parents still around? Mm-hmm. Did they have siblings, friends? What were they like before they got their powers? What were their vocations before they got those powers, right? What, what was Astria's job, if she had a job, or, or, or Mercury's job, or even Hercules' job before? And I'm talking before mm-hmm. they got their powers. And the reason I refer to them as their names, because we never got the real names. I, I don't right. know, you know, it, what their names are. And they never talk about it in the show. They Correct. never talk about their lives 
pr- prior, uh, previ- or, yeah, you know, prior, uh, you know, you know, to them getting their powers, they know they all got plucked from Earth at the same time. Mm-hmm. So I'm just I'm gonna break, dissect it piece by piece. So there's a lot of stuff because if she's an immortal and then she gets sent back, how long was she training? When she came back, did she go to find is- her family? Did she go and try to find their their not, not she? Did they try to find their families? Did they try to find their friends? Mm-hmm. How did they form this bond? Because they came from different parts of the world at the time. And let's be real. English was not a universal language as it is now back then. Mm -hmm. So they had to teach them to communicate and learn. And and obviously they're smart. So what, what characteristics, I mean, I see the characteristics they have, but what were the aliens looking for to say? Yeah. What was the criteria? People, what, exactly. What was right, the criteria? What was the criteria? What was the criteria for these three people randomly on the planet Earth to get plucked mm-hmm. out to be brought over? You see, I, I'm 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 seg- I'm running with you, and I'm I'll segue off to the side as well on yeah, that yeah, because my mind my mindset was thinking along the same way in a sense of the time dilation. So what I was thinking that you see them originally, like you said. Um, you see them from their original garb. You realize, okay, this is this is like ancient time. Yeah. So we're we're talking we're talking like easily we're going to we're going to be nice and say this is like two thousand years ago, like you know, like before BC or four thousand years ago. You know, you know what I mean. We're in that type of vein, type right. of scenario, two thousand right. years ago, right? Uh, you know, like two thousand before Christ and all that kind of stuff. Cool. So I'm going to take this that if they are during that time frame. They get picked up. What was the criteria that made them, you know, made the, the aliens choose them? Yes. Because if we go after the first one, they said um, it was more of, you know what? We'll take a 30s. I'll just segue somewhere and I'll come no, right back. Ahead, no, 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 no. But it's the explanation for everyone to catch up on where we're going because the point I'm going to get is so there's the three individuals, the three main, main characters, the three right. of the five, I should say. Then there's Sentinel One, which is the, as Barry was saying, that's the, that was the artificial life form, uh, yeah. uh, intelligence. So yeah. basically, the, the, and there was uh, Mo, the maintenance operator. So yes. we're going to go back to Sentinel. We're going to Sentinel One. Sentinel One on the first episode in regards to Morpheus, who was the, the, uh, the villain or the uh, nemesis of the show at that time. Right. He was, they're asking, like, who is this guy? You know, what do you know about him? Because they're realizing that there's something special about him and Sentinel one like made it sound again this show just made me laugh on certain things like uh-huh. the way this guy was like saying yeah that was a that was a, that was a bad time in the days that i really never thought i'd have to think about it again this is an <laughs> internet yes. this is this is an artificial intelligence talking and he's like man i messed up then man i i i, I try something and that and that experiment didn't mm, uh, I'm still, I'm still kicking myself for that one, man. If I, Oopsies. if I know what, if I know what I knew now, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have pulled the trigger. So what it shows is that this guy Morpheus was a farmer, and he was just tending the land, whatever the case would be. And they did, he said we did the same thing. We plucked him out from a planet. We gave him train him, whatever the case. What we did with him, as Barry mentioned, this guy had all three attributes under one skin. He basically had the ability to morph, to run speed, and have strength. Yes. So. I now took it that, as he says, we went through that, but he, instead of using his powers for good, like he did in the beginning, then he realized, you know, I'm going to use it for evil. And then he was short, you know, shape shifting and being a bird or whatever. And then he changed into a dragon. So yeah. we're just showing us that his mindset was like, huh, I have powers. Why am, why am I, let me take over. I'm not policing like the guardians, like, you know, no, I'm, I'm being like a manhunter. I'm taking over. Yep. So in that realm, you see now, that Sentinel One now, I would say it this way: that Sentinel One realized, you know what? I should retract. It's really the aliens. It's really Sentinel One who took it, took took everybody. Yeah. So Sentinel One realized, like, yeah, I messed up on that first experiment. You know what I'm going to do? I think the problem is I have them all together. I'm going to separate and give those three attributes to three separate people. So going back to the individual, now he's on Earth. He pulled these guys up from a different time. Mm-hmm. You know, 20,000, you know, 2000 BC type of scenario. Great. How long did it take him to train? I'm not wondering, like, did it infuse him with abilities? Did they do like, you know, a uh, robot chicken and had him in, had him in the chair, had their eye open and just like all information just dapped into them? Yeah, like clockwork like, orange. Like clockwork orange, you know, like, uh, or the matrix at the end, like, 
are you? I'm the one, you know, that kind of scenario. Yeah. Yeah. And was that for a day? Was that for a week, for years or whatever the case would be? Now, my only thought process is that uh-huh. if that was done for a certain amount of time, they still came back in time that kind of going back, looping back to what we're saying, their names now became part of history that yes. you knew who maybe not art. Um, uh, let me just say, uh, Astria? Uh, Ast- Astria, sorry, maybe they may not, we don't really hear Astria's name as no, historical, no, no. but True. we know if we, we hear Mercury, we hear Hercules, Hercules. Yes. So that means they had to have come back in time, come back on back to earth with enough time to be part of the lore. So, I would now say that, hey, they came back. They were immortal because now we're talking about using a time travel belt to go back to 1977. Uh, 1977 is how plus before after Christ? So that means before. So, yo, they're on this earth for a little while. And I'm like, interesting. They start to give me the feel like the eternal movie now. Yes, yes. So now my yeah go on. go on no no i gotta go for i'm just gonna make one comment here real quick and i'm gonna let you go on man go, go. i love when you're talking so here we go <laughs> it's, it's for real so here it comes right so when i got this whole scenario of morpheus coming in mm-hmm. to me that was like their black adam to me yes yes that yep, was yep, like yep, their yep. sinestro yep yes 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 that, yes that, that's yes. all mm-hmm, i want to say mm-hmm, that's, mm-hmm, that's the feels mm-hmm. i got from it that's it's what, like okay that's your sinestro that's your black adam Okay, yep. all right, then I see what you're supposed to be doing. Okay, cool. That, that's all I wanted to throw in. Keep on going, no, sir. No, 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 no. Listen, it, it, it makes sense. Those are beautiful attributes to add in. Um, Morpheus was the Black Adam, but the only difference with Black Adam, at least Black Adam, you know, was an anti hero, and we will get to that when the movie comes out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not when he goes rock, though. When he, rock. Rock, he was retcon. So well, he was, he was, well, yeah. yeah he but was I know retcon. when he originally came in, he was pissed. He was, he was, he was, yeah, he was, bogus, he was I'm pissed. Done. <laughs> Right, but at least you can tell that at least he yeah, kind of like right, kind of right. came in kind of okay. But now he's a Sinestro all he's a he's a Sinestro all the way. That's what he is. But anywho, the point I'm saying is that you can tell that this was uh, an eternal type of individual who was sent to guard the planet Earth. Uh-huh. That's what their function was, right. and they basically maintained that. Now I could take it. That Astra may have been, yeah, she may have been the brains out of the operation. You don't need me out in the field as much. We'll see how it goes out. I'll just tell you what to do. And that's when you hear the story in the lore. Murky, go and help out. Go save the village. Speed. Hercules, go on the other side of the village and, you know, start lifting boulders and put a blockade so the water doesn't come in. Tsunami coming. Okay, no problem. Who knows? Anyway, that's just me making jokes right now. But I'm going to go that they were internal. I mean, I'm sorry, immortal. Yes. and And they can go on. Now, I wish that uh, the 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 people behind the Eternal movie, ex- no, now I say I can't even say the show anymore because that movie it, it hurt me. The the um, the uh, not anymore. Externals, externals, like the Marvel one. I say I can't even no, say this. Eternal, it's, it's, internal, right, internal. That's right. You see, it's that's how painful the Eternal had. A, they had they had they had chances to do stuff for that movie. Just unfortunately. There's things I liked and things I didn't, but yeah, yeah but it, it, there was yeah. there was a there was a couple of lackluster parts in there, like mm, the, the the sewing from one scene to another, or the storyline just kind of right, dipped right. out too much, and I'm like, ah, you're hurting me, you're good, ah, you're hurting me. But I I will agree, Barry. Let this show come back if this show comes back right now, because we could use that type of commodity and just showing that we're working on a lore that's from days of old. It's still that's right now. You can show proof that these individuals were part of lore of days of old, and you realize like, oh, we can connect that together. So all these stories in these certain times, what happened? It was them. It was them, right? But and even before that, so one, what was the criteria? What were their lives before? What made them get selected? And then when they got picked up by the aliens, we never see the aliens. I this this is what I'm thinking. The it. We never see no. The, the only time you see them is in a distant picture, and they look humanoid. And you see them there, mm-hmm. you know, saying, "Oh, we're training them." And you see like machines, and, you, and everyone's like, kind of blacked out, so it's just silhouettes. But you never see who these aliens are. We don't even get a name of what the mm-hmm. alien race is. They're obviously they, they're technically advanced, and we don't know the motivation of why. Why mm-hmm. do we need guardians for space? Because if you're gonna train, take three people from home. Uh, you know, w- w- surprise, you're kidnapped. Okay, here you are. Um, you know, UFO sighting, yeah. right? We're training you, give you powers, you're immortal, we send you back. 
your guardians. Okay, but guardian against what? You right. see, I know like for Green Lantern Corps, that's why I feel a lot of similarities and that's the best way to do it. The Green Lantern Corps, you had the guard a sector of space from evil, from, you know, other things, the yellow lanterns, other lanterns. And then at a yeah. point, they mentioned that on Earth, Earth is the only planet in sector 2816 mm -hmm. uh, that has four green lanterns on it where right. each other sector only has one green lantern because <laughs> there was something inside the earth that they are trying to keep safe that it was like how they have that big energy battery of oa and if you read jeff john's storyline of darkest mm -hmm. Day, right so it, they talk about that there's something in the earth so this is why they said oh just send over a couple of extra ones be on the safe side and that yeah, was a long-term plot so what if you were if you need guardians you know there's a major threat out there you're not Fast. sending them to stop uh you know uh, tsunamis you're not sending them to stop volcanoes or or people robbing banks you're sending them there to do something the question is what morpheus right. to me could have been the gateway so this is what i wanted to know i needed to know more i said mm -hmm. about their past how they got along the times they didn't get along and then more about the aliens a lot more about the aliens and then coming back and carrying on that way. And then what do they do when they come back? Now, the show, as I said, ran for 13 episodes. Mm -hmm. We hear all these adventures of Hercules and Mercury. So what do they do? Do they just stay there? Because we all know there's the 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 famous, you know, trial, the 12 uh, tri uh, trials of Heracles or, you know, where he goes crazy. Oh. And he, right. So is any of that based on what he did? Maybe at one nice. point the Sentinel said, you know what? I'm fed up. I want to see the world. I'm going on a walkabout like Crocodile Dundee and Hercules just walked away, right? No! Right? Sorry, run said, away. I'm out. Run away. I, I just need, I need, I need, I need to be away. I'm immortal. I want to see. And maybe he got into his own solo adventures, which mm. we can talk about on another show uh, in the future when we get into Freedom Force. Because mm. the same Hercules, voiced by the same actor and drawn the exact same way as on that team. So, Filmation, you know, uh, Lou Schumer uh, Studios had its own everyone's always talking about universes they had their own universe yeah because you've got freedom force we're talking uh you know the space sentinels um what was it uh super stretch and micro woman uh, you know I, I, all these mm -hmm. heroes from, from that right mm -hmm. uh web woman th they were all in that same universe so people like to put together you know universes and have the heroes crisscross so this is where i want to see i want to know more about their past more about who they were trained to fight right and more about their own interactions because they're not going to stay there all the time in the spaceship i mean as cool as the spaceship is mm -hmm. you want to go around and i would like to see them out and about in modern times so just yep. see but where are the sentinels today where are the space sentinels today right Th that's where my imagination goes you know, I, I, they stole there on the spaceship. And, you know, usually a lot of these tales come around and they, oh, well, we had a falling out. And now we have to kind of, you know, I, I don't want to grim. I don't want to grim falling out. But at one point they might say, hey, I I, I want to have a girlfriend. I want to have a boyfriend. I, I want to mm -hmm. have maybe a family. I know I'm immortal, but maybe I met somebody. And, and these are things you don't know. Like what happened right. to today? And at the time when you watch the episodes, People knew of them. So when you watch the episodes, you'll see them show up and people are like, hey, look, it's this, it's the young sentinel. Exactly. In the exactly episode, on that part. Right? Even though the show was called Space Sentinels, like, it's the young sentinels. So obviously they're known by the public by their identities. Right. They're there's I'll say their superhero identities are known by the public and they are welcome because there's one episode they show up on, on a rocket ship, you know, at you know, in NASA. Yeah. And the military's there and it's like, hey, look. It's the space sentinel. It's the young sentinels. Woo, young sentinels. We need your help. Right. Okay. So you're not. They have a good reputation. Right. No, no, not completely. Completely. Um, I will say, um, for us to like you do this, in you know, because you know, you know, everybody, you know, we're gonna get to that point. We're gonna talk about it. We're gonna, what we're gonna do with it. Mm -hmm. Right. I apologize. Either Rod's still going or I'm still going. One of us is frozen, but one of us will come back. So, you know, hold, hold, hold that thought. Hold that thought. We we will be back as soon as the camera picks up. And oh, okay. There you back. go. All oh, right, okay. So that's interesting. Okay. So I was hearing the whole time. Oh, <laughs> cool. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. So listen, I was going to the part like watching the show. 
I definitely got to make this thing more realistic in the sense of modern times and bring it up. I had a hilarious internal joke because now this is just the science in me will kick in. Yes. When they had to depart on a mission and they leave, they get into a tube of some sort and they get projected out. Now, the funny thing is that they all flew. So it was it was just interesting in a sense. Hercules can fly. Mercury can fly. Uh, Asteroids can fly. Um, and it was like saying, hey, in wherever the volcano was, it was hilarious to me mm-hmm. that this volcano had to be somewhere within a good distance because technically they were flying from wherever their base was, their home base was, to wherever the situation is. Yeah, it's like I know. I think maybe didn't want it to copyright any any Star Trek and beaming or anything along that line, but they're just constantly flying, constantly flying, constantly flying. <sighs> Went in your face the whole time. <sighs> I'm like thinking. Now we know by by of course proper editing they get there, but I'm in reality like. <sighs> are we there yet? Not yet. Center one. Are we still there? No, no. You still you still got another hour flight. Okay. <sighs> See, so I got, got a work theory. Here. I got ah. a theory. And, and, and it's not even a joke. Usually when I say I have a theory, there's jokes behind it. This time I'm being serious. My theory is, was the flight really them or was it the belts? Because the Legion of Superheroes had flight rings. Right. Now, even the members who could fly wore the rings because they all also act as a communication device. Mm-hmm. Right? So I think oh. out of the whole team, the only one that could fly under his own power that it seems at super speed was Mercury. Anytime he was flying at normal speed, I think he was using belt power, maybe saving his energy to when he had to use a super speed. So I know they said they can fly. They never defined it. And the reason I say that because in episode one, you see they get into the tubes and their belts start to glow. There's like a three... There's three colors on their belts in a circle, okay. and they start to glow. So it's almost like he's, they're charging their belts to well, let them fly. So this is why they always went all through the tubes. But then, of course, throughout the episode, you'd see them flying constantly. Just like a Green Lantern ring, it is charged for 24 hours, right? Right. Okay. I'm just saying, so, like, distance of how fast to get there. Right, it's right. more or less that it was it was that, like, the flying on a cord. That's no problem. They got a belt, no problem. Like, yeah. are we are we we're going to update it to this, like, lightning speed and it's ending? <laughs> You seen them just fizzle out as a. Well, we knew <laughs> flew pretty fast, right? Because at times, you know, but that's why I always said: is the power really? The, I mean, okay, the ship shift, shape shifting was Astrea. That's mm-hmm. her power. Hercules yeah. was strength. That's yeah. his power. Mercury yeah. was speed. That's his power. The the flying for all three of them, only one out of three was really known to fly. Like Mercury Correct. can fly at super speed, but mm-hmm. he'd rather run. Right. Okay. So was the flying <laughs> them or was it the belts or right. did the belt augment their power? Mm-hmm. That's, that's another, that's, a, that's another way to look at it. That's another right? way to look at because it. Because you look at certain people like space ghost, space ghost has powers, but, right? You know, every time everyone took off the energy bands from his wrist, it's like, Oh man, he's lost his power. No space ghost could still fly without his energy bands. He still had limited strength without his, his, his energy bands. When he put them on, they augmented everything and gave him extra ray blast and all that. But he still had the powers. Mm-hmm. So we okay. don't. That, that's why I said it's. it's the we can break it up. Ambiguous with that. Correct, but you know, on that day of days, you know, like they didn't want to. They couldn't. Not say they couldn't, mm-hmm. but every show was a standalone show. Well, they had some ripples into, you know, future ones, whatever the case may be, but the majority of the show was really a standalone show. Yes. So to spend the time about the belts and the utilities and, you know, I can understand that. So that's where this will be great. Like, we can bring this back. We could definitely de- uh, de- delve into that a little bit more and explain right. a certain amount of things. Show the why is the maintenance, oper- uh, ma- maintenance operation machine um, so in love with uh, Althea? Astrid. Why? Astria, why? Why? This boy, this boy, this boy, this boy, this boy just, oh my goodness, made an operator. He just like, see her name. He just looks back. Lights, eyes are all hearts. <gasps> oh, oh, Astria, if I get sick, will you take care of me? Sure, Mom. Oh. <coughs> yeah. And the robot Foolish starts more. coughing. I'm like, that's coughing. hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Or she got missing or something happened to her. <gasps> Don't do that to me. Oh my God, you nearly killed my circuits. Yes. Oh. I can't, yes. I'm like, guy, relax. Take it in, brother. Take it in. Take it in, brother. Well, Take it in. 
every show has to have its comic relief right back then. Oh, for sure. Oh, for sure. So and it was Batman hilarious. And, you know, the, the new adventures of Batman and Robin had uh, Batmite. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was Batmite. He was a combination of R2-D2, uh, combination of R2-D2 and 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 you know every other kind of whimsical character so he has a right purpose, and he was also comic relief at the same time so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's so, yeah. so it's a comic relief at the same time so this is where i think mo comes in and that was more of a tongue-in-cheek thing that mm -hmm. now once again why is he like that right and what i mean by that is what happened on that planet for him to really get attached to astria that, correct that He's in his own robot version. His robot love that he has for her. He has an attraction for her. Completely. Right. I feel she she probably saved his life. He was a bum, like you know. He's like only got like only got like two two bars of two bars of juice. I got one bar of juice left. I'm about to pass out. Astra, save me, save See, me. Right. Exactly. That, that's I mean, it. it's like if you read the comic book Micronauts by um, you know back in the day, uh, uh, Michael Golden and Bill Mantello. Mm. They had Princess Mary. And Princess Mary had uh, Robotron, and Robotron was her guardian. He took care of her. It, you know, he was kind of overprotective at time. So they had that bond. Mm -hmm, and, and mm -hmm. Nothing, you know, rom romantic about it. It's just they had that oh. tight bond. So I think they just took different aspects, a little bit oh, of humor, sure. a, a soften sure. it up, oh, and, and sure. that's where he came in. But I, it was still hilarious. I would, so. this day and age, bring back all the characters. D give me, oh, give me a sure. show, a new animation, just like they did with Voltron on netflix and ran for a couple of seasons there's as i said there's a lot of meat level left on that bone there's a lot of questions that need to be answered and when you answer those questions you get into a deeper show yeah get a deeper lore of of it and just and re, you could build off of that very easily so yeah no i agree i agree you know, um, and then you crisscross because once again you crisscross hercules this hercules into the other hercules from freedom fighters and hercules on the freedom fighters or freedom force, freedom force not freedom fighters mm. freedom force Right, which came out the year after. Mm -hmm. In that show, who do you team up with? Sinbad, Isis, right? So you have Isis, who was on DC Legends of Tomorrow. Who, Isis, who had her a live action show, was a Shazam Isis Hour. You had all that, and and she had her own animated character voiced mm -hmm. by the same actress that did the live action show. And we right. will talk about Isis another time because she had her own DC comic too. And and she was still came back as a love interest for Black Adam. So I'm curious if they're going to even mention her in the new Black Adam movie coming up with Dwayne Johnson. Mm. Because where Billy had his sister, Black Adam had his wife, who was Isis. That's how they did it a couple of years back when they kind gotcha. of brought her back in. Very curious about that. So not to get off track, but there's a whole world that they can put together like they had future quest by dc comics where they brought right. in all the hanna Barbera characters for that 12 issue miniseries yeah yeah i remember that right and that space goals that's herculoids you know all of them get together to fight this this alien that's coming to deal with uh destroy the earth get, tell me I, I i want to know right so yeah. that's that's my whole piece on that now Usually I'll say, yeah, time to fan cast it. But you know what? I didn't fan cast this with anybody. I didn't come up with any voices. I okay. see the original actors. Um, and I'm sure I could pull up actors right away, but I would like to get actors that are appropriate for the work. You know what I mean? Correct. Right. And and yeah, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, as I say, I don't know if you got any you, you pulled any actors I, together I, or I did, I did, and, and you're absolutely correct. I realized like, you know what, I want this to definitely be an animation. Yeah. Uh, being a cartoon, just basically bring it back to that type of series. And I realized, like, if I'm going to do that, let me give it at least the, the, the voice actors, let me give them their due and at least try to get a majority of them in there versus just going s just straight out anybody. Right. Uh, I wanted to, I wanted something slightly, slightly different. I got two voice actors and an actual actor. I okay. can't even say it that way. It's no, it was no disrespect to anybody. I'm just saying it that way. Yeah. yeah. We know them as voice actors, uh, and actually one of them is act a voice actor and an actress, and then the third person is a straight actor that I know. I can't recall off the top of my head if he did any voiceovers. I, I uh, do mine off the play. So give me your three. Give me your three. Yeah. So basically, what I wanted to have was for okay. So for Astria, yeah. I actually wanted. I'm going to go for someone who's seasoned in the sense that she has the ability to have a range, and I I used her before. I can't remember where, but I've used her before. Uh, Chris Summers. Oh wow! Just like okay. you know what wow. I mean. Like, I, I, like, like 
she has the ability to to show that leadership type of you know voice and basically she she's done a whole stint of of different characters so like I, I'm not even saying that this will be this will be an, another easy in the park sense for her to portray the right type of voice character to basically give us the Astra that we may have seen in the 1970 70 show mm-hmm. but give us a modern day one but just give us some more grit and give us some more not say attitude but give us some more dominance in the sense of your voice and realize like yeah um i'm the leader of this team and just basically showing showcasing we're here to help out and do whatever the case would be that's for one mercury i actually wanted to have uh someone with just you know some, some fun some fun in his voice uh i was going for where are you stop hiding on me i was going for dante where oh my gosh i'm just, i want to say his name correctly oh my gosh where did i just put my my apologies everyone oh okay. no problem so you look for that i'm gonna give you who i would say right dante, now. dante basco oh, dante i remember basco. first thing yeah i'm saying dante basco who played uh zuko zuko and um that's the most more relevant one that anybody will remember Right, so okay. Dante Basco, so at least who plays Zuko, Zuko in uh, Last Airbender, who I believe is coming back for the the uh, the next installment, the next installment that they're bringing in, he can be comical and serious and everything along that line. But we, I, I, I want to give him that ability just to show his comical side, and you throw that as Mercury, and then I was going for now here it's I was going for Zac Efron. Now I was going for Zach Efron for Hercules because I could see him just having that jovial smile and and just be serious at whatever the case would be. But he's just as he's satire. He has his joke. You hear you hear the little joke from Quims and stuff like that in in the show. And Zach does that in every bit that he he has that comical range. He does that very well. So I wanted to give those my three: uh, Cree Summer. Dante Basco right. and Zach Efron. Ooh, I like that. Okay, so I know. Okay, I've heard off the top of my head, I would mm. say, uh, give me Zendaya. Zendaya, man, she played Mary Jane. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And I thought of her. I was thinking of her for a second too. Right. I wouldn't even lie. I, I thought of her, and and I was like, okay, cool, go, cool. all right, yeah. good. Give me, give me, give me her. Um, the other guy, I've got to look up his name. Okay, hold on, hold on. Uh, so uh, uh, let me find out here. He did the voice of the Incredible Hulk in Hulk versus. So there was like two little short cartoons, Hulk versus. So you have Hulk versus Wolverine, and he did the voice of the Hulk. Is this Fred? I I think so. He's, was that, he's was that a big burly guy. It's um okay. I believe it's the same one who does um. I think he also did the Hulk Smash, uh, Hulk at the Agents of Smash. It I think that's him. a I, but I know that it's Fred Fred T. I can never you know pronounce his last name. Um, let me see. Yeah, I say yeah. Frank Task Taskasor Taskasisor Tas Taskas Sior. Right. Okay, I know you're talking yeah. about. Yes. 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 But he has yes. a nice good voice and he can portray him calm angry uh, i think he would give him some good range to hercules so that's where i would go with mm. with hercules now with with uh asian actors you know and to find like a good voice actor mm-hmm. uh, and i know people might turn around and, and scream at this one but he's done it already i would actually go with uh phil lamar so phil lamar did the voice of Samurai Jack. Right? Oh, uh, you froze, man. I, okay, one of us froze again, I but I know Rock can hear oh. Oh, he's back. Okay, there you go. There you yeah. go. So Phil right. Lamar mm-hmm. did the voice of Samurai Jack. Right. I know he's not Japanese, but no one complained about his voice work. Uh, he, yeah, he's 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 a big he's a big guy. He has yeah, he has the clout and basically the, the the repertoire to the, no one can just go against something like, oh you know you're just picking someone off off you know who doesn't do enough you know voice work no 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 his his 
His his resume is solid. It's, it's, and it's, said, it's solid. So, if yeah. you watch Samurai Jack, that's Phil Lamar. And if you didn't know he was a black man, man, okay, you missed out. So, and then why I say he can do the comical side of it? Because Phil Lamar started on Mad. Well, not it, the. I learned a Phil Lamar of Mad TV. Mm-hmm. So he was doing sketch comedy. I'm not sure if he did stand up comedy. So clearly, he has a comical personality already. Right. He understands comic timing. So understanding comic timing is not is something you have to understand, train, mm-hmm. and know how to do it, when to do it, and get that dialogue in. You know, he also did the voice of John Stewart from the Green Lantern Corps, right from Justice League. You know, yep. Justice League Unlimited. So Phil Lamar is who I would go with to play. You know, um, and I, you know, for uh, and I don't mean to offend anybody, but he's mm-hmm. done Samurai Jack for so long, five seasons. I right. think he can do a phenomenal job. You know, on that, yeah, and, and that's that's my three right there. Okay, okay. That, there we Definitely. go, off the fly. There we go. That, that's... No, no, that's good. Woo. No, that's good. <laughs> Yay! The Ric Ric Flair. Woo! Woo! <laughs> to beat a man, you gotta beat the man. <clears throat> and of course, the, the the Space Sentinels, Young Sentinels, they park on Space Mountain. No, no, not at all. Yeah. It's just it's Space Mountain, different thing. That's a Ric Flair reference, and it's just wrong. Mm-hmm. It's funny, but right on. So this is it. This is what brings us to our show. All right, you know, Rod. Any last thoughts on the space slash uh, young sentinels? Listen, the space slash young sentinels. It's uh, it's an oldie. It's an oldie, but a goodie. It's one of those gems that may have been forgotten because it's just been. It only had thirteen episodes. Right. But when you watch it, you see like, yo, you know what? Since they're they're redoing a lot of, they're they're bringing back a lot of shows and everything like that. And you know us, everyone. We always like to just pick good stuff that we realize, you know. It has it has a foot to stand on. I believe this has a foot, two foot, two feet, you know, a chair, table to eat at. It has some. It can it can come it can come in and sit, <laughs> stand, and eat off that table. There's stuff for it, so I I ain't worried about that. So yeah, I would definitely say that. Listen, give them a try. Um, go and look. You can find it on. You can find it on YouTube. You can find the series. You can find a series on YouTube. Yeah. And just you know, just watch it, and then just indulge and take it in and realize for the time it was at you'll see how what the i know you're talking because we can't hear you I, I, it's my connection on my side this is one time we apologize everyone that the connection is just so wonky you know gotta gotta love uh technology he'll be back in a second so Rod, hold on. I know you're yeah. going. To, okay. Oh, there we okay. go. There there we go. go. Finish off go. your point, sir. Finish off. Your uh, point. I don't even know where I stopped off, but I'll basically say that. <laughs> but I was still going good on my end. But either way, <laughs> listen. All I'm going to say is, um, give them a chance. Watch. I remember talking about YouTube. So check it on YouTube. You'll see that it's it's a unique show. You will catch and see that hey, they are they were. Ahead of their time, they were doing things Absolutely. differently at that time. They were doing things different at that time that you're like, that's not the average, uh, again, filmation was also around the same time with He Man and Stern and stuff like that. Yeah. So the dialogue was slight, it was quite different. It was more modern, it was more up to date to yes. relate to people. So I would just say, find it on YouTube. You can check it out, the Space Sentinels, and you will see for yourself how this gem can actually make it, make it in today. Absolutely. I agree with you. I'll leave this on that note. I mean, look, at the time when Space Sentinels is out, there was not that many black superheroes that were in that medium that were being on animated on Saturday morning cartoons. Mm-hmm. You know, just to give you an idea of, of who we had, we had, you know, at the time it was Astria from the Space Sentinels. Mm-hmm. It was Black Vulcan from yeah. Super Friends. Yeah, not even Black Lightning, Black Vulcan. And, and that's another story in itself. Yeah. And then there was Super Stretch and Micro Woman. That is it. As reputation, you know, that is it, right? So this show shows you one how far ahead it was. Uh, mm-hmm. if, you know what? If, if give me a crossover with her and Aurora. Give me a crossover with, with Astria and Storm from the X-Men. That that would be wow. That that's that's the show I'd be going for. And on that note, I'm gonna we gotta leave you all on this. This <laughs> whole world was put together by a pencil a piece of paper and lots of imagination keep on dreaming let's go sentinel one take me to your planet 
Give me a power and immortality. <laughs> you know, Maybe I'll be able to finally pay off my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. I paid it off a long time ago. <laughs> right on, right on. <laughs> if you know that joke, you know that joke. Night, everyone. Later.